my name is Kim McQuarrie, and I'm the Director of Community Programming and the Co-Director of the Innovation Labs here at the Dudley Museum. We would like to welcome you back for our bi-monthly podcast, Follow the Tangent, Archives, Art, and Anecdotes. In this bi-monthly podcast, we delve into the world of art history, looking at artifacts that we find in the archives and seeing how those, art, how those art artifacts might illuminate a little bit about art history, and in this case, the life and the art of Salvador Dali. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, our archivist and collection manager, Shana Buckles Harkness, and we're going to be delving into a mystery um, that Shana has been working on for the past two and a half, almost three years now. Welcome back to the podcast, Shana. Thanks, Kim. Good to be here again. Awesome. Now, today's topic is a little bit complicated and it has a lot of different facets. So maybe we should set up a little context um, for the viewers before we actually delve into um, the mystery itself. Um, why don't we start out with um, one key term that we're going to hear a lot about in the podcast today is provenance. Could you tell us just what's the quick definition of provenance and why it's important? Okay, um, another term for provenance would be custodial history. And it basically means who owned what painting in which years. So following a painting, or it could be any artifact, not just painting. Um, who owned it when, which years, which specific dates. And we track it from its beginning until the present time who owns it in their collection now and it just gives a richer history of the piece um, along with exhibition history as well okay excellent so this custodial history today is as you say tracing who has owned this painting in the past and where it's been and the group of owners um, that this mystery is associated with, it is actually a group, which is kind of interesting, um, or at least it originates in a group. And that is this group called the Zodiac Society. Um, could you tell us a little bit of, this is such a unique, uh, a unique group and such a kind of cool story about Dali. Could you tell us a little bit about the Zodiac Society and how they yeah, were- Yeah, the Dali? Zodiac group, um, sorry. Zodiac Group was a um, group designed by Salvador Dali and Gala. I say designed, but it was created. It was somewhat of a marketing concept. He needed an, a monthly income. His contract with a gallery owner named Pierre Cole was ending. So there's some different stories of who came up with the idea. They can both be plausible, but so they came up with this idea to have 12 members for each month that would each pay 200 francs to Salvador Dali every month. And they would get a paint, one large painting or one small painting and two drawings. And their month would be drawn just by picking names. Mm -hmm. So one person would have December and January and so forth. Um, this took place in 1933. So the entire year of 1933, Salvador Dali was getting a salary based on his artwork. Um, it was a brilliant, brilliant plan um, for him to be able to freely paint and um, still make money. And it also enabled him, these were very well-known people. So when these paintings went on exhibit, they were attached to these people's names. Mm -hmm. So it just, um, it, it was a marketing tool for Salvador Dali. It got his name out um, while making money. Mm -hmm. And these well-known figures, um, the one specifically that your mystery is associated with is a woman named Caress Crosby. Um, what was Caress famous for and how did she get connected to Dali? Yeah, Caress Crosby was American born, came from a wealthy family, uh, but she was an innovator and she came up with the patent of the modern bra. She, like many women of her age in the early 20th century, were tired of the corset. So she designed this modern bra 
a few years later, she did sell the patent. But that is one of the things she's well known for. She ended up moving to France. So she became essentially an expat. Um, and she had a uh, a small publishing firm uh, of artist books. And so Dolly was introduced to her by the writer Renee Crevel. And they formed this lasting relationship, this friendship um, through the 60s, through the mid 60s. So from the Zodiac time in 1933 to mid 60s. And it was actually at her place in the United States in 1940 where Salvador and Gala Dali would eventually travel and write his secret life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to see just from what did the two anecdotes that you've shared um, about them. It's very easy to see why they would have connected, because, as you say, she was an innovator, you know, uh, coming up with a way to solve a problem that many women had. And Dali, on his scale, you know, he's also innovating there, you know, coming up with a way to solve his problem. He needs to, you know, make money. Yeah. And what is a way that he can do that? And so they're both kind of on the cutting edge of figuring out new ways to solve problems. Oh, yes, most definitely. Yeah, super cool. Now, um, as you learned about Caress Crosby and the Zodiac Society and started researching these paintings, um, you realized that we didn't know um, what all of the paintings were. And um, I, why don't you tell us what was the, what was the first um, thing that you came across that kind of got you started down this path um, and made you realize that we didn't know the painting that belonged to Caress Crosby, but you might be able to figure it out. Yeah, there had been some speculation and some uh, research and I never, really gave it much of a thought like um I forget the painting title that some people associate with her zodiac painting I never gave it any thought um until I was in our own archives I was indexing some letters and I found this letter it was correspondence from A. Reynolds Morris to Julian Levy so the gallery owner who sold a lot of Dolly's works in the 30s and 40s and in this letter, um, they mention Cress Crosby and this painting called Little M, and they put it in quotation marks, mm-hmm. which, of course, they came up with this little nickname. Um, they said the painting was untitled. I started thinking to myself, hmm, Little M. So then I went to... Some other letters, we did have a letter from Cress Crosby to A. Reynolds Morse, and she is describing um, her role in the Zodiac group, what the Dollies expected of them, um, and how they were given their paintings. And she said, um, that little painting to which you refer was my Zodiac painting, Mm -hmm. but no other... (laughs) No other description. We know it's little. It's a small painting. Um, That can be, we know that as well, because she had two drawings from that same time period. So we know her Zodiac painting had to have been a small painting if she also received two drawings. So we know the painting's little (laughs) in size, physical. So then the sled... You know, over the past couple of years, Cress Crosby's archives are in um, a university in Carbondale, Illinois. So I went there and searched and there's some photocopies of letters to Cress Crosby from Mr. Morse. And they're still going back and forth about this little M. And she had told Mr. Morse that. Well, she sold it through the Julian Levy Gallery. Mm -hmm. And again, it's all this little M, little M, um, and still nothing. So I'm like, okay, Julian Levy Gallery. Off I go on a plane to Philadelphia to the Julian Levy archives. Um, I spend a few days there going through his ledgers and anything Dolly related. 
And lo and behold, in one of Julian Levy's ledgers where he wrote down meticulously everything he sold by which painter, how much, who he sold it to. And here you can't really see in the photocopy, but it says <laughs> Dolly little M to Jeffrey Gilmore of the Waldorf Astoria. So now I know that Julian Levy did sell it to a Mr. Gilmore. Mm -hmm. Even Julian Levy called it little M. And after all this time going in my head back and forth, little M, could this reference little masturbator? Making a comment on Dolly's early 30s paintings, the great masturbator. Um, trying to think of anything at this point, conferring with Dr. Dreffitt here, wondering what it could possibly be. So then, as I'm going through the Julian Levy archives, they would keep pictures, photographs of paintings that were intended to be sold, or maybe it was sold. And I found this painting this picture of this painting didn't have anything on the back but it does tell me that this probably was in Julian Levy's possession mm -hmm. or at the very least someone was trying to get Julian Levy to sell it this painting fits the time period of where of which the zodiac group would have been operating and it's a small in stature painting. Yeah, I think we have um, a better image of this. Let me go ahead and let me pull up. Um, the image. Yeah, there we go. So we can see here. This is the painting um, that you had the photocopy of. Yes. Now. It does say the it's dated Salvador Dali, 1931. This still doesn't exclude us from the Zodiac group because even though it operated around 1933, there were other paintings that were from earlier mm -hmm. that he gave them. Or sometimes he wouldn't deliver a painting till 1934 to the group member. So just because the date says 1931, it doesn't automatically exclude it as being a possible Zodiac painting. Now, looking at it, we could interpret, interpret this as an androgynous figure, possibly masturbating behind a rock. Uh, we're not sure. Again, this is speculation. I wish I could find one letter, some reference that had more of a description about this painting. Mm -hmm. um, here, it's provenance just says private collection. Um, we do know who this owner is. This person is very private. We have contacted their assistant asking, when you bought this, was there a provenance or a custodial history attached to it when you purchased it? Um, and we would be looking for that name Gilmore, mm -hmm. you know, Julian Levy Gallery, Gilmore. Um, if indeed that was on their custodial history when they purchased it, that gives us even more of a chance that this, especially if it said Gilmore, then we would know without a shadow of a doubt that this was Cross Crosby's Zodiac painting. Unfortunately, this collector is very private um, and this could be years still waiting to hear back from them or maybe if this painting ever goes on auction where the auction house would then have to provide a provenance so maybe in a few years, if it goes up for sale, we can find out more information then. So thinking about the loose ends, and um, you never know when we're doing this podcast, uh, who might eventually listen to this um, out in our audience. So if we're thinking about the loose ends that are left, what would be the kind of, you know, you're saying perhaps getting some link from the um, 
current owner of the painting, but what other things might be uh, helpful for you would be like the magic bullet to solve this mystery. It would be like your ideal thing to find. Probably um, a letter, an invoice, something, a, a primary resource, I would call it, something in writing that um, describes this painting, connects it with Caress Crosby, um, but mostly in a print form, a letter. Even if I could see the back of the painting with labels, sometimes that could give a clue. So, but until then, I just have to wait and be patient and I can still pursue. It doesn't mean it is this painting, mm -hmm. you know, like a scientist, that's fine if it's not that, if it's not this painting, then we move on and we look, what are some other options that this painting could be? Mm -hmm. um, I kind of just want to be able to close this door one way or the other just for my own sanity. <laughs> yeah, but right now, this is your best hypothesis of yes. the identity of this painting. Up until this point, yes. Now, this is especially interesting, and you know, we can maybe bring it full circle um, back for the people who are fans of our own museum. I mean, one of the, obviously, we're always interested in how the archives can advance um, our art historical knowledge. Um, but in this case, we also have a personal interest because um, I believe that we are the owners of several of the Zodiac paintings. Yes, we are owners of three. So three out of the 12 paintings. Yeah, I think which we have the images. Is 25% of the Zodiac paintings we own. Yeah, so we're gonna just take a quick look at the ones that are in our collection. Um, and these are actually three paintings that are usually on display when you come to the yes. museum. Yeah, they are. This is um, Meditation on the Harp. Um, this is uh, one of Dali's riffs on the Angelus with the uh, edible. And then this is the Atmospherocephalic Bureaucrat, Milking the Cranial Harp. <laughs> yes. And then the Sugar Sphinx. Um, it would be very cool now to be able to then identify all 12 of these Zodiac paintings that would really add to what we know. Yeah, we're really only missing Cress Crosby and Felix um, Rollo. Okay. All the other ones we know, but these two members, um, it's still speculation. Same with Rollo's. There is some speculation that his painting was Suez, which we also happen to own. So wouldn't that be incredible if we found evidence that that was indeed his Zodiac painting and upping our tally to four? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's that's just incredible. Yeah, that would make an amazing exhibition if we could have all 12 of them together, plus the drawings. Yes, yes it would. Maybe one day take a little more research. Well, I thank you so much for um, sharing your mystery with us. Thank you. And I really invite anyone who's watching this, um, if you have any uh, art historical interest or if you just like a little detective work and uh, you happen to be able to find out anything about Caress Crosby, about the Julian Levy Gallery, about um, this painting, the little M, um, who knows, maybe you have a picture of the back of the painting and you can yeah. you know, make Shana's day if you could just share that with us. Um, and as usual, Shana, if anybody has any information, um, where could they send that to you? They can just email library at the dolly.org and we'll be happy. Any type of information you may have and then let us sift through um, the material. But I welcome it all. Awesome. And again, as usual, if you have any questions about anything that we're discussing or if you have any special interests in the archives, um, go ahead and drop us a line at library at the and we will try to address your inquiry um, as we go on. 
Now, next uh, podcast is going to be in February, and we're going to be joined by our curator, William Jeffett, Dr. William Jeffett, and he is going to be showing us some of the frontispieces that Dali created um, and how those are connected to his relationships with many, many famous writers um, in the surrealist circle. So that is sure to be interesting, and we hope you can join us then. But for now, we'll sign off. Thanks to everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.